Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Today is Monday, January 15th, and this is your morning prayer. So let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, some fun stuff today. Acts chapter 7 and 8. Really, we're going to mainly just look at chapter 8, because that's probably where um, most of your questions are going to come from. Uh, chapter 7 is the second half, well, it's more than the half, I guess, uh, the the continuation and then the conclusion of the um, of what goes on with Stephen, uh, who becomes... Um, you know, a, a martyr for the church in that he was uh, selected out of a group of men to help wait tables. Um, you know, the apostles had others, you know, they needed to devote themselves to to praying and, and ministering and, and teaching and all that. And they needed somebody to take care of the people. So Stephen is one of these guys. Um, but then Stephen finds himself um, called up by, you know, the, the council based off of uh, some false accusations. And what he does is just, um, you know, clearly the Holy Spirit, you know, moves him um, to to give this great sermon. But he he preaches to the people, giving them this full, well, not full account, but uh, you know, fairly fairly decent account of the the history of the people of Israel and and the the history of salvation um, that God had brought His people through. That showed how you know, like, look, you know. You, you people have, you know, God has, has, has given us these these prophets and, and uh, the patriarchs and, and, and you killed them and, and leading all the way up to the, the, the righteous one, Jesus, whom you killed. And this enrages them and they stone Stephen to death. And here's where we get introduced to Saul, who uh, oversees this, approves of it, and then begins ravaging the church, starts his persecution. And we'll hear more about Saul uh, tomorrow. But it's chapter 8 that is probably the one that is most uh, eyebrow-raising for you because um, there's this strange thing about um, uh, the Holy Spirit not being given in baptism, seemingly, and uh, something about being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus um, and the Holy Spirit not being received and what's going on here. And um, this is a, a passage where a lot of people will point to to say, like, oh, see, um, you know, receiving the Holy Spirit is not a part of baptism, or or at least it's it's a separate part. That baptism is not something that that saves you and gives you the Holy Spirit. It's there's another component of it because what we have here is a situation where the people of Samaria receive the Word of God. Many are being baptized, uh, including this one uh, Simon, a man named Simon, who was a magician, performed magic, did many signs and wonders, and a lot of people um, paid a lot of attention to him. They, they, they followed him. They, they were wowed by him because of these great signs and wonders he did. Well, now he sees um, Philip coming and preaching this powerful word of Jesus and doing many signs and wonders, and he even better than his signs and wonders. So he's like, wow, this is great. So he's baptized along with them. Okay, So he believes and is baptized. Um, now, before we get into what happens next, it would be helpful to um, remember the Great Commission. You know, when before Jesus ascends into heaven, he says, "Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, okay? baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you." So, here we have go, go and baptize, go and baptize all nations. And we, we have other scriptures that tells us, you know, how baptism now saves you, that baptism, you know, we have where it is imparting the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, yes, go and baptize all nations so that they might receive the Holy Spirit. But there's a second component to this Great Commission, right? It's not just go baptize people. It's go baptize and teach them, okay? Teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. So, baptism and teaching go hand in hand, right? Um you know, baptism imparts the Holy Spirit. Absolutely, 100%. But we also need to then instruct and teach and raise people up in the Word of God so that way they understand fully, or as full as possible, um, what it is they have received in baptism. Because if we do not teach them about this, if we do not um, 
provide them the word of God and raise them in it, they will, they will turn away from their baptism. They will reject it because they will not understand the gift that they've been, that they have received. So teaching baptism, baptism, teaching, it all goes together, together, all goes together, together. It's too early. (laughs) It's cold and it's early. I don't know. Okay. So having that in, in kind of the, the back of our minds here, now we go back to the text here. So Samaria had received the word of God. So they sent Peter and John so that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, for the, for the Holy Spirit had not yet fallen on them, but only had been bap- but they had only been baptized in the name of Jesus. Okay. Now, if we stop right there, we have a we have a problem. Because okay, so Samaria had received the word of God. They'd been baptized, okay? But it says the Holy Spirit had not yet fallen on them. Okay? But they'd only been baptized. Now I know it says in the name of Jesus. Just in the name of Jesus is we're 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 not saying that it's it was some kind of a different baptism. It's just you know you could just kind of look at that as a shorthand. But they were baptized, okay, in the name of Jesus. So Father, Son, Holy Spirit. All right. So if you understand that as they the Holy Spirit had not yet fallen on them, but they had only been baptized. Okay, you, you'd have an issue because you'd say, well, wait a second. If baptism gives the Holy Spirit, how could they not have Him if they've been baptized? It's the following verse that helps us understand better what's going on here. Because uh, Peter and John go down there, and what it says is they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. See, now we understand that there's something a little different going on here. And it's particular. <laughs> I remember we said prescriptive versus descriptive. This is descriptive of something particular that was happening during the time of the book of Acts, the, this early church, where they were doing signs and wonders that we just don't see today where we had the apostles who were specially selected and and sent to do special things. The apostles were able to lay hands on people and bless, essentially bless them with the gifts of the Holy Spirit that would be like gifts of signs and wonders, okay? Which is why we see all the signs and wonders, gifts of tongues, that kind of thing. So there is a difference, like when Jesus breathes the Spirit into his, his apostles, you know, grants them the Holy Spirit, and then the Holy Spirit coming upon them on the day of Pentecost, there's, there's a difference there. Receiving the Holy Spirit for salvation, absolutely. That's what we get in baptism. But there is, during the time of Acts, a special giving of the Spirit that comes by the laying on of hands. Okay, notice Peter and John didn't go down there to baptize. Okay, and that's the key. If they had been baptized incorrectly, you know, if, if being baptized in the name of Jesus was wrong, then Peter and John would have gone down there to baptize them properly. But they don't do that. They go down and they lay their hands on them in order to give the people of Samaria the gift of the Holy Spirit, which would be to speak in tongues, which would be to perform signs and wonders, to help spread the gospel. Okay, Because remember, we don't have those written gospels yet. So then what Simon sees is that the Spirit was given on the laying of hands and he offered them money. Well, why does he do that? Because he sees that the Spirit given in the laying on hands provide, um provided the signs and wonders, okay? And what is Simon all about? He's about the signs and wonders because he was a a magician previously. So he understands this as saying like, oh, well, I can buy the Holy Spirit then, which shows that he doesn't have an understanding of what baptism does. And this actually brings it all together and see like, oh, okay, because he hasn't been taught. And that was the problem, okay? The people in Samaria had, had been baptized, but they hadn't been taught. Okay? They, they weren't being taught the word of God. They weren't being taught to obey everything that Jesus commanded. So Peter and John goes down there to anoint some with the Holy Spirit so that they might speak in Christ's name, right? So they might go in there and teach and, and, and fill in that, those, those gaps there. Well, Simon the magician, he, he hasn't been taught. And so he has an improper understanding of what baptism is, what the Holy Spirit does, what the signs and wonders are for. He's just looking at it in terms of, wow, this is cool. I want to do it too. And this is why the uh, the apostles um, kind of rebuke him and and say like, oh, you you you're you're sinning against the Holy Spirit essentially. Like you you um, you know, woe to you if if you think that this is the way it goes. And he does, and they they that pray that he would repent, and he does. So there, there is that corrective there, which is why they go down there to teach. And then if we see the, um, 
the uh, the account that immediately follows this is Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, which gives us a, a counterexample, well, not a counterexample, but kind of further emphasizes this idea that it's not just you go baptize somebody and you leave and it's fine. It's like, no, you baptize them, then you raise them up in Christ. You know, this is what we do when we baptize infants, right? We don't just baptize a baby and say, okay, have fun. No, we say, okay, now bring this child back to church. Keep bringing this child to church. Raise them so that they might understand fully what they've been baptized into. So the Ethiopian eunuch is receiving the word of God, reading the word of God, but not quite understanding it. Um, and Philip says, do you understand what you're reading? He's like, no, how can I unless somebody teaches me? So Philip teaches him. And then they see some water. And he's like, oh, what's stopping me from being baptized? Absolutely nothing. So let's baptize you. So, you know, it's, it's, it's teaching baptism, baptism teaching. Um, you know, wh wh which order is it supposed to be? It's like, well, either way, <laughs> either the word of, it, it's not an either or, the word of God comes to you. It's either it comes to you through the word, either read or spoken first, which then brings you to baptism, but the word has already, the word has brought you to baptism, or the word comes to you in baptism and brings you to the written or spoken word, okay? The word of God is going out, grabbing people, you know, filling them with the Holy Spirit and bringing them to this two um, faceted, uh, a dual faceted kind of um, uh, gift of, of faith that comes through baptism, baptism teaching, te teaching baptism. So it all goes together like that. Um, and that is all of my time today, but I think we covered um, the, the nuts and bolts of, of what's going on there. And hopefully that clears some things up of what's might be a little bit confusing in that text today. So if you still have questions um, or comments about that, please, by all means, uh, drop those in the YouTube channel or uh, you can uh, reach out directly to me. So there you go. Acts chapter seven and eight. Let us pray. I thank you, my heavenly father, through Jesus Christ, your dear son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Blessings to you on this Monday, on the beginning of this week. Hope you have a great day. Um, if you're caught in this uh, this chill that we're in here, then stay warm, stay safe. Um, but have a wonderful day, and I will see you tomorrow. Until then, peace be with you. <laughs>